Well, good morning and a happy new year. Billy Graham once told the story of how he had went to the dining area of the U.S. Senate in order to speak to some people. And as he was passing through, some of the senators uh, uh, called him over to their table. They said, Billy, we're having a discussion here about pessimism and optimism. Uh, one of the senators asked Billy Graham, he said, which one are you? Now, Billy Graham immediately responded, well, I'm an optimist. Uh, another senator asked him why. Billy Graham said, I'm an optimist because I've read the last page of the Bible. We, we Christians, we should live with that same, uh, that same kind of optimism. So as we enter into this new year, as we enter into 2021, uh, let us enter in with great, great hope. Let us, let us enter in with hope that this pandemic uh, will soon end. Uh, uh, let us enter in with, uh, uh, with hope uh, uh, that uh, the political and civil and social unrest and, and wounds of this nation will be healed. Let us enter into 2021 with great hope that our, our personal problems will be rectified and our personal goals will be met. Uh, let us enter in to the year 2021 with great expectation and great hope uh, that revival will come to the nation of the United States of America and many souls will be saved uh, and that the church of Jesus Christ will be greatly multiplied. My personal hope uh, uh, for us uh, uh, as, a, as a church at Midland uh, is the same hope that Paul had uh, uh, for the church at Colossae. He wrote uh, in Col uh, Colossians 1 verse 9, uh, he wrote, Be filled. Be filled with the knowledge uh, of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding uh, that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthening, uh, strengthened with all might, uh, according to His glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us uh, to be partakers uh, of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Folks, let us enter into 2021 with great, great hope. Will you pray with me? Lord, we do come to you this morning with glad hearts. Lord, we are grateful. Grateful for the blessings of the year 20. And we're grateful that you brought us through the, the hardships that some of us have experienced during that very difficult year. Uh, Lord, we have great expectation. We have great hope for what you have in store for us in the year 21. Lord, let us, uh, uh, let us go into this new year with a, a gladness of heart and great expectation that, uh, uh, that things are going to turn around. Lord, that, uh, uh, that uh, we, we know there are things that you have in store for us that we can't even imagine yet. But Lord, let us enter into 2021 with our hearts full of hope and with a, a, a kind of a lightness and a joy uh, within our soul that we know uh, things are going to get better. Lord, let us, let us understand that uh, you have a plan, Lord, and it's being fulfilled even in hardship. So, Lord, let us enter into 2021 with great, great hope. Now, this morning, I want us to consider uh, the great hope that we receive as believers in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. John the Apostle wrote in 1 John 3, uh, verses 1 through through three, he said, Behold, uh, uh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, uh, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, uh, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when He is revealed, uh, we shall be like Him, uh, for we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. This scripture deals with the, uh, the purifying hope that resides in everyone who has saving faith in uh, Jesus Christ. We have a living hope. A, a living hope. We have a, a purifying hope. Uh, uh, there are a lot of ologies in the world. Uh, I've thought about this recently. A lot, a lot of ologies in the world are, 
Uh, I remember in college having to study psychology and sociology. There are many ideologies in the world today. There's physiology and meteorology. Even in seminary schools, they often speak of, uh, of various ologies. They have uh, theology and Christology and eschatology. The list of ologies in the world goes on and on and on and on. And as I've thought about that for the year 2021, I, I think I've developed a new a new ology, a new kind of ology for the year 2021. I want us to spend just a little bit of time studying what I, what I would like to think of as hopeology. You see, the Bible has a great deal to say about hope. And often when we see the word hope, it's accompanied by two other words, faith and love. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, And now about it, faith, hope, and love, uh, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, it seems to me that preachers spend a great deal of time uh, teaching and preaching about love. And they spend a great deal of time preaching and teaching about faith. But I don't think we spend nearly enough time talking about that other word. I, I don't think we spend enough time preaching to you uh, about what the scripture would tell us about hope. Now the word hope appears in the Bible, appears in the scripture some 160 plus times. So it's an important word within the word of God. And every time we hear that word hope expressed in the word of God, it's like, it's like someone turned on a, a light in a dark room. You see, it's hope that spreads light in the darkness. It's hope uh, that draws joy out of sadness. It's hope that, uh, that brings uh, victory from defeat. It's, it's, it's hope uh, that snatches life out of the very clutches uh, of death. Uh, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Paul's telling us there, if our hope is only in what uh, Jesus has done for us in this life, uh, then we, we Christians, we're pretty miserable, a lot of people. He's teaching us there that our, our hope in Christ has to go beyond what's in this temporal, uh, this temporal world. Uh, in this life, Jesus says we will have strife, we will have trouble, we'll have tribulation. Jesus said in John 16, verse 13, In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Our, our hope, our hope has to rest in, in something that is beyond what this world has to offer, beyond what this temporal life has for us to experience. Our, our hope has to, to lie in what is eternal. Our hope has to reside in Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, there are many in the world who simply don't see it that way. Instead of trusting in the eternal Lord Jesus Christ, they, uh, they place their trust in humanity. Uh, they place their trust in, in this world. They, they wish and they fantasize their way through this life. And it, at the end of all things, uh, they find that all of those wishes and all of those fantasies they had for, uh, for hope in this world have, has only led them into a greater form of hopelessness. You see, this, uh, uh, this world... Uh, this world, the, the hope this world offers us, it's a false hope, a, a false hope, a, a true hope, true hope, real hope can only be found in one source, uh, and that would be Jesus Christ. Concerning the promise of our salvation uh, through the seed of Abraham, uh, through this man we know as Jesus Christ, the writer of Hebrews said in Matthew 6 verse 19, this hope we have as an anchor of our soul, uh, both sure and steadfast. Now that, that's real hope. That's the real deal there, folks. Uh, uh, when we have hope in Jesus Christ, when we have hope in the seed of Abraham, as the writer of Hebrews calls him, when we have that kind of hope, we are no longer like ships on the sea that are being tossed about. You see, those who don't have hope in Jesus Christ, they're like ships out on the ocean that are being blown about by the winds and storms of this life because they have no anchor. But we, we who have faith, we who have hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, 
we have an anchor for our soul. We're held fast when the storms of this life come and try to blow us out of our place. Look, unbelievers, they, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Son of God. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Because of that, they can only place their hope in the human spirit. Now, many of those uh, people who place their hope in humanity have given themselves a, a new title in this day and age. They call themselves secular humanists. And all of those uh, humanists, they, they have no choice uh, uh, but to place their, uh, their hope in humanity because they've rejected God. You see, they depend on humanity to solve the world's problems. They think, well, this life is all there is, so whatever comes out of this life is all that we can possibly hope for. Now, that, I, I think about that. that. That has to be a miserable way to live. It's probably a little easier for those humanists to have that kind of hope while they're young and, and the pleasures of this life are still uh, fulfilling. But uh, just imagine what it's like for them as they grow old and, and, and all of those pleasures of the world fade and their physical bodies begin to fail. It's got to be difficult for them to hold on to their hope during those times. You, you older folks, you, you know what I'm talking about here. How much hope could you possibly have if you thought that your hope resided in the few short years that you have left in this life and, and your hope resided in the physical body that you, you exist in right now? That has to be a miserable existence. Solomon, uh, the wise man of the Old Testament, he understood these things. He wrote in Ecclesiastes 2, uh, verse 3, he said, I search, I search in my heart how to gratify my flesh uh, with wine, while uh, guiding my heart with wisdom, and how to lay hold of folly until I might see what, what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made my works great. I, I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I, I made myself gardens and orchards, and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I, I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees in the grove. I acquired male and female servants, and I had servants born in my house. Yet I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and special treasures of kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men, and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great. And I excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not hold, withhold my heart from any pleasure. Uh, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my reward from all my labor. Then I looked at all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. Therefore, uh, there was no pleasure under the sun. Solomon understood. He understood that human pleasure, that uh, human uh, goals, that human accomplishments, all of that... Uh, all of that's a temporary thing in which to place your hope. All of that's uh, uh, temporal. He said all of that's a vanity. It's a waste. He said all of that's like trying to grab hold of the wind and, and hang on to it. it. It fades away and there is no hope in any of that. You see, our, our hope as believers in Jesus Christ is much different uh, than the hope of the world. Our hope is in unseen eternity. Paul writes in Romans 8, verse 24, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We, we Christians, we, we have a hope that's much different than the hope of the world because our hope is in, it's certain. And their hope is, uh, is unsure. Our hope, our hope can't be seen with the physical eye. 
Uh, our hope hasn't yet been revealed to us, Paul says. We, we can't see it with our, our natural eye, but Jesus Christ has gone ahead of us. He's gone ahead of us and he's gone to secure the hope that he's promised us. And because of that, we have certainty in our hope, even though we can't see him. Even though we can't see Jesus Christ right now, even though we, we know with certainty that he's gone to prepare a place for us and we have the guarantee that he will deliver on all the promises that he's made to us. Now, where does our hope come from? Well, Paul tells us in Romans 15 verse 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our hope comes from the God of hope. All those who know God have the hope of God, but those who do not know God are devoid of true hope. It's God who fills us with His Holy Spirit, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to have great hope. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 16, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us every everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Hope is a spiritual gift. Paul said these three spiritual gifts remain to us, faith, hope, and love. So this is a, a gift from God, this hope that we've been given that resides in us as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. No one, no one denies that these are difficult times. No one denies that 2020 was a, a very hard year. Unfortunately, 21 is probably going to pick up just as 21 left off. But in times like these, uh, it's then that we as believers in Jesus Christ must certainly place all of our hope in our Lord. Uh, look, Satan's, Satan's working around right now and he's attacking on all fronts. We, we talked about this in, in, in a sermon not too long ago, how, how Satan is on the attack right now. He's trying to gain. He's trying to gain as much ground as he possibly can before Jesus Christ comes back. And he's, he's using this, uh, uh, this virus. He's using the, the political and social turmoil in our nation to, to gain uh, that ground. Uh, and Paul tells us since we're in the midst of this spiritual warfare, in, in order to protect ourselves, we've got to put on our spiritual armor. And one of the most important parts uh, of our spiritual armor is this word hope, hope. Uh, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8, but let us uh, who are of the day be sober, be serious, uh, uh, putting on the breastplate, breastplate uh, of faith and, and love uh, and as a helmet. Get this now, uh, as a helmet, uh, the hope of salvation. D did you catch that? The hope of salvation. The hope of our salvation, the hope of eternity in heaven with Christ, that, that hope, when we wear that, when we put it on, it's like putting on a helmet that protects our minds, protects our, our thoughts from the attacks of Satan as he tries to lead us into despair. He, he wants to lead us into hopelessness by dragging us through the turmoil of this world. And Paul says, the way you avoid that is to put on the helmet of hope in your salvation. Paul says in Romans 8 verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? What shall we say regarding all of the troubles that are going on in the world around us today? What do we say? We say if God is for us, then who can be against us? Even in this time of turmoil, no matter what the world does, no matter what the world says, it doesn't matter. God is for us. And if God is for us, then we cannot be defeated. It, it doesn't matter what happens in the world today. Jesus Christ's church will never be defeated. Paul says in Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, through whom also uh, we have access by faith into the grace uh, in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, 
knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Uh, now hope does not disappoint, uh, but the love of God has been poured out uh, in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Look, as saved believers, we have peace with God. We're no longer enemies with God. Our sin no longer separates us from God. We are at peace with God. And, and through our faith, we experience the grace of God. And when you've experienced the grace of God, then you can rejoice in great hope. You see, with hope, we can even find the glory of God in the most troubling of times. Why? Why? Because trouble teaches us patience. You see, uh, after God has delivered you uh, from, uh, from tribulation in the past, uh, the next time trouble comes into your life, uh, uh, you'll have great hope that God's going to deliver you again. Look, just think about some time in your past. Think about some time in your past when God has brought you through uh, some great difficulty. Something in your past that was hard for you to get through that you know God delivered you from. Doesn't that experience, doesn't, doesn't that experience give you great comfort? Uh, doesn't that, that experience teach you that since God brought you through that trouble in the past that you can have great hope uh, that God's going to lead you through this current, uh, this current trouble? There's great hope uh, uh, that we find uh, from knowing that God has delivered us from trouble in the past. Uh, now Paul writes to Titus uh, in Titus 2 verse 11. He says, For uh, the grace of God uh, that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that, we might, uh, that he might redeem us uh, from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speaking these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. In Christ's first coming, Advent, Christmas, as we talked about these past weeks. During that time when Christ first came into the world, uh, the grace of God and salvation appeared to all men. Uh, you see, even, in our, uh, even though our greatest hope is in the eternity that Jesus has promised us in the future, that doesn't mean that we can't have hope now because hope has already come into the world. Jesus taught us that we can have hope in this present age, in this day we live in right now. But in order to receive that hope, we have to set aside the false hope that this world offers us. And we need to look forward to the glorious second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for us. He died for us. Christ paid the ultimate price as a payment for our sin. And in doing that, he purified for himself a very special kind of people. We are the special people of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you find comfort in that? Knowing that, that you're special because Jesus Christ loves you so much that he died for you? You're very special. Look, some people are struggling right now finding self-worth. I've, I've run across some recently who are saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worth very much to the world. I'm not worth very much to my family. I'm not worth very much uh, uh, to myself. I, I, I'm not worth anything. Jesus Christ loved you so much. He thought you were so valuable. He thought you were so valuable. He thought you were worth so much. He died for you. Now tell me you don't have worth. You are a very special people. A very special special people because Jesus died for you. You are of great worth to our Lord and Savior, so don't ever let anybody tell you you're not of value. Because we have hope in the eternal life that Jesus Christ has promised us, uh, Paul says uh, uh, that we are to proclaim that hope to those who don't have it. We're to go out and we're to proclaim the hope of salvation to those lost in the world, those who are hopeless. You see, the only, 
only real hope that resides in this life is Jesus Christ because Jesus has overcome uh, the world. And in John 16, 30, uh, 33, again, Jesus said these things uh, I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The world we live in is full of uh, people who are afraid, full, full of people right now who are, who are struggling uh, uh, to make sense out of all of the, the trouble that's going on around us. There, there seems to be an ongoing sense of anxiety in the world today. There, there's this shadow, uh, this shadow of dread uh, that seems to be hanging over us. Uh, and there are a lot of people. A lot of people out there in the world who are trying to find something to hold on to. They're trying to find something to grab hold of and to gain hope from, and they can't find it. They simply can't find it. We need to take it to them. We need to take them the hope uh, that they need in order to get through this life, in order to get through these times of great difficulty. See, these people that we're talking about, they're in great need of three things. They, they need someone that they can trust in. Uh, they need someone who will, who will promise them that there is a future, a good future ahead. They, they need someone. They need someone to love them. That sounds, uh, sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Faith, hope, and love. They need the very things that Paul promised that, uh, that they would receive uh, by the Holy Spirit when they have faith in Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus never said that in this life we'll have it easy. Jesus never said because you have faith in me that, it, that everything's going to go well with you in the world. Instead, he told us over and over again that we're going to have trouble. We're going to have tribulation. We're going to be reviled and persecuted and hated for our faith. And he says there's going to be all kinds of trouble that comes. Uh, but when that trouble comes, how do we respond? Uh, Jesus said again in John 16, verse 33, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Now that, that wording there in the King James Version of the Bible is a, a little bit misleading for us because we don't speak uh, the same kind of English they spoke in the 1600s when the King James Version was written. So we need to understand that when Jesus said be of good cheer, he wasn't saying uh, to uh, overcome your trouble by willing yourself to be happy. He's not talking about happiness there. You see that, uh, that phrase, be of good cheer, in the 1600s it meant take heart, take heart, be of courage. Jesus is saying we need to show courage in times of trouble. Courage. Don't be afraid. Why? Why, why should we not be afraid of the trouble that's in this world? Because Jesus has overcome the world. We need to understand that. We need to understand this passage. When Jesus says, I've overcome the world, he's not talking there about this little bitty planet that's circling the sun. He's not talking about the physical earth. He's talking there about the system of evil uh, that has festered in this world ever since man fell in the Garden of Eden at the beginning of time. He says, I've overcome the system uh, of evil that permeates this world. He, he's overcome the sin and rebellion uh, that dominates human society. Folks, that's where we live. We need to understand that. This, this world that we live in is a world that's full of evil and it's full of sinners. It's, it's not a good world that we live in, yet we as believers in Jesus Christ are called to live a holy, righteous life within that evil system. And Jesus says, when you do that, the world's going to revile you and you're going to have trouble in your life. And when that trouble comes, how do you respond? You respond with courage. You take heart. You be of good cheer. Why? Why? Because Jesus Christ has overcome all of that. Jesus says, look, I'm going to love you through it. I'm going to love you through all of that trouble, all of that tribulation. Jesus says, you can trust in me to get you through the mess that you're in in this current world. He says, you can have great, great hope in the future that I promised you. Friends, as we enter into the year 2021, 
let us enter in with great, great hope. Let's pray together. Lord, we do ask you, Lord, to, to lead us into uh, 21 with a, a spirit of hope within us, a, a, a spirit of individual hope, a spirit of co corporate hope. As a, as a church, Lord, let us enter in with hope that, uh, that all things are going to be made right. We, we know that. We know that. We know that in the end everything's going to work out and we know that we can trust you. Lord, we know that you love us and we know that we love you and because we have that faith and hope and love, we know everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be okay. Lord, let us enter into 2021 with a spirit of hope in you as our Lord and Savior. Lord, let us, let us have that kind of hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I, I pray that you are blessed in the year 2021, and I, I pray that in your heart you have that spirit of hope. If you don't have it, find it. Find it. How do you find it? You have courage, and, and you believe. You have faith. Have faith in your Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that He loves you, and that you love Him, and that you have hope in a glorious future that's promised ahead. That's where our hope lies. Because we have that hope in that future, we can have hope in this present age, even now. Friends, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.